Utilitas, Fermitas, Venustas. These are the three principles of the Vitruvian Triad curated by Marcus Vitruvius Polio, a first century AD Roman architect and engineer. Vitruvius didn't exactly flourish during his time, but he is well known for his ten books on architecture known as De Architectura. These books are considered a treatise that gives information about the principles of design and building that governed Roman engineers and constructors. He explains in his triad that utility provides an efficient arrangement of spaces and mechanical systems to meet the functional needs of its occupants. He continues that physical strength secures the building's structural integrity. Additionally, the aesthetic quality of a structure comes from style, proportion, and visual beauty. Vitruvius thought that it was necessary for architects to be guided both by practical concerns as well as aesthetic allure. The architecture was as much about Greek architecture as Roman architecture. Greek and Roman styles have long been connected due to the similarities between the temples and other structures that the two civilizations created. Since Roman architecture was created from the seeds of Greek architecture, it only makes sense that Vitruvius would talk about both types in his books. Vitruvius' ten books were studied by humanists and architects alike when it was rediscovered in the Renaissance. Architects themselves even became humanists because of the readings. He created a foundational text in the education of architects. The architecture acts as a basis for architectural theory. Vitruvius taught architects how to truly think. He passed his ideology onto Renaissance architects to create structures that would appeal to both emotion and reason. However, though Vitruvius created detailed documentation of Roman and Greek architecture, the original version of Vitruvius' treatise did not include drawings or pictures of the structures that he was describing. This, plus some missing information due to the hostility of time and man, led to the treaties being recreated multiple times by various people. In fact, more than 70 manuscripts were transcribed in the 14th and 15th century. Vitruvius's documentation of Roman and Greek architecture gave insight on how ancient architects designed buildings and is credited for being the foundation of architecture theory. Antonio Songalo was the first to make a version of the treatise with illustrations in the year 1511. However, the illustrations were rough and were completely based on Vitruvius' description without providing an explanation of Vitruvius' meaning. This transcription still left room for interpretation by the next generation of thinkers to come in later years. Cesare Cesariano was an Italian painter, architect, and architectural theorist who wrote an improved version of the Trevisus Treatise in 1521. He included drawn plans of Roman theaters, but they were merely guesses of the Vitruvius men. Cesariano's illustration of the exterior of the theater indicates that he had never seen a Roman theater before. Since there were no accurate illustrations of Roman theaters, and the authors were basing them on Vitruvius' description, it was hard for architects to use Vitruvius' ten books of architecture as a guide to designing buildings. Yet, Cesariano showed the architectural world that another's interpretation can create a new age of thinking. Daniel Barbaro was another Italian architect, writer, and translator of Vitruvius. He wrote his own version of the Architectura in 1556 by basing his drawings on the remains of the Theatre of Marcellus and the description Vitruvius provided. However, the theatre was converted to a villa fortress in the 11th century by Pierroloni. 
Therefore, Barbara was unable to make an accurate illustration of the theater as well. But again, it created a new idea of thinking about architecture that proved architecture to be an interdisciplinary field. The way of thinking encouraged by Vitruvius and adopted by Renaissance archetypes didn't end after the Renaissance. This way of thinking is still taught and used among architects today without thinking about the spaces being created, be it functionally, beauty, and structural integrity, architecture would be vastly different. If architects created buildings without thinking about how they would interact with our world, then all our buildings would look like the Sheraton Hotel.